My name is Lee Howard. I'm the director of network technology for Time Warner Cable, the second largest cable company in the United States. And as the director of network technology for Time Warner Cable, one of the things that I'm responsible for is identifying new technologies to solve our, our network problems, to solve, to make the network run faster, more efficiently, more cost effectively. And so in that role, uh, I early on identified the uh, exhaustion of IPv4 addresses as being uh, a problem that we needed to look at uh, how to resolve and how, to, how we were going to address that moving forward. And I decided that uh, after doing some analysis that definitely dual stack IPv6 was, was our best plan for moving forward. And so uh, my work on IPv6 on our network and around the world has been uh, what's brought me to uh, the LACNIC meeting. When we started looking at how we were going to uh, be able to continue to grow both our, uh, our customer base and our services uh, when IPv4 addresses were no longer readily available from our local internet registry, uh, we had to evaluate different alternatives. And so we looked at uh, how well does carrier-grade NAT work, how, uh, what would the cost of buying IPv4 addresses would be, and, and how much would it cost and, and what would it take to, uh, to roll out IPv6. And our analysis was, uh, was pretty thorough, and it was clear that any of those options has, uh, has trade-offs. There are good, good parts and bad parts, uh, but the most cost-effective is going to be IPv6. So it's clear that, uh, that deploying IPv6 means that uh, we no longer have to be concerned with uh, our, ultimately, someday, uh, as the rest of the world deploys IPv6, we won't be uh, as, as concerned about the exhaustion of IPv4. We can effect a transition. But I think it's important for the rest of the world to also deploy IPv6 so that we're all sharing the same internet because the internet is only effective for us if we can communicate with each other. And so that's why it becomes important for, uh, for not just each company but uh, every company uh, to deploy IPv6 on their own networks. One of the things that we found as we deployed IPv6 is we did started doing measurements to make sure that our customers were not having uh, any negative uh, experience. And it's very important to us is the quality of experience for our customers and, and uh, how they perceive their access to the internet. So we put some measurements in uh, around our network to make sure that uh, when they were accessing the websites or content over IPv6 instead of IPv4, uh, was the performance as good or, or not as good as it had been before. And it turned out that uh, the average latency over IPv6 is lower than it is over IPv4. And it, it, that's on average. So we still have some, high, some websites that are high, and it's not even uh, consistent from any given location on our network or a content provider's network. So it's not everywhere is IPv6 faster. But uh, interestingly, I think it's very interesting that the average speed is indeed just a little bit better for IPv6. And that's not just our results. I've uh, talked to people from uh, several other companies who've done completely different kinds of measurements, and all of them have found pretty much the same thing. That, uh, and none of us is entirely sure why, uh, but uh, in the wild, when we see it in production networks, it does seem to, to have a slight performance edge over IPv4. I'm a little bit concerned about uh, some parts of the world, and, and maybe it's more uh, organization by organization. Uh, I know that there are some, definitely uh, some companies have done a great job of rolling out IPv6. Uh, the Internet Society has a, a measurements page that shows uh, how ISPs around the world uh, are doing at deploying IPv6, as measured by some of the major websites who have IPv6. <clears throat> so those major websites count how much traffic they're getting, how many hits they're getting from uh, various ISPs. And there are definitely some very large deployments. On the other hand, <clears throat> when you look at statistics in, uh, in some parts of the world, and Latin America is one of those parts of the world, we don't see a whole lot of deployment on user networks. And that's, uh, it, it's a matter of concern, because uh, it's, as a network protocol, uh, it is entirely, it, it's, its value is entirely determined by the network effect. So if, if I'm using IPv6 and you're using IPv4, we can't talk to each other unless somebody decides to translate those packets for us. And that translation also has a cost. And somebody has to decide that they're willing to do that. <laughs> so I think it's going to be very important, especially as LACNIC is very close to run out, uh, for organizations to, uh, to begin their deployments or to accelerate their deployments. I've talked to several people uh, in the Latin American region who have deployed IPv6 but haven't finished their deployments yet. And so that's going to be really important in order for them to continue to be able to grow that, their networks. 
I understand that there's only 50% internet penetration in the Latin American region, and that's incredible. There's so much room for growth, and there's so many possibilities for, uh, so there's so much potential for people who really need the internet in order to be able to communicate with the rest of the world. And uh, they won't be able to do that. They're just We won't be able to continue expanding the internet unless we have the addresses that are available in IPv6. So we need to definitely see more deployment. Some of the interesting things that we find when, IP, when users get IPv6 is they don't really notice the difference right away. But it is, uh, I've mentioned this before, that the, uh, the speed of IPv6 is just a little bit faster uh, in terms of latency than IPv4. <clears throat> and that may matter to, to latency sensitive applications. That, uh, when you accumulate that kind of uh, improvement over time, that may begin to make a difference. And I know there are some applications that are pretty excited about finding an extra five or 10 or 15 milliseconds of latency in, uh, in their applications. But one of the other things that we look at is the kinds of services that can be enabled. Uh, when we talk about rolling out new services to, to consumers or the Internet of Things or new, any, any new device that requires an IP address in order to be connected with the rest of the Internet, <clears throat> we have to have IPv6 in order for us to be able to scale the deployments of those kinds of new devices and services. So, you know, people talk about IPv6 as being a great new platform for innovation. I'm not sure that I've seen it yet, but certainly it has the possibility for enabling a lot more communication than we've so far seen on, uh, in, in home networks in particular. And it'll be very interesting to see uh, how that relates to uh, enterprise corporate networks too. <clears throat> as they get a uh, broader rollout in IPv6, it'll be very interesting to see whether new things become available to them as well. So I look forward to seeing uh, what else comes now that we can actually reach end devices from anywhere on the internet, depending on the protections they have around them. Of course, the security is also a concern that we still are paying attention to. It's not any harder to provide security in IPv6 than it is in IPv4. It's only a little bit different, and so, uh, but it's interesting that the default configurations are just a little bit clearer and more open. I think we've seen a lot more best practices in security as people are carefully and conscientiously deploying IPv6. I'm often considered an optimist when it comes to the deployment of IPv6 and, the, and projecting when it's going to be the predominant protocol on the internet. And uh, one of the things that I did is I, I decided that I, wasn't, that I needed to check my own guesses and my own estimates. So I went to a Nanog meeting uh, a few months ago and during a lightning talk, I, I created a poll and I put up a website where I asked three questions. When will IPv6 be cheaper than IPv4? When will IPv6 be faster than IPv4? And when will there be a significant number of IPv6 only users? And it was very interesting. Some, the, the number of people who said that IPv6 would be faster than IPv4 in a couple of years was surprising since I'd already talked about my results and other people's results that it's already faster in, on average. Um, and uh, the majority of people said that IPv4, that IPv6 would be cheaper than IPv4 in, I believe it was 2017. I don't remember for sure off, off the top of my head. But the one that really struck me was that uh, more than half of the people, and this is Nanog, so this is really well-informed network engineers in, in North America talking about when they thought there would be a significant number of V6-only users. And they said uh, the, the majority of people answered 2018 or 2019. That says to me that we need to make sure that we all have a significant deployment, but that we've, we've done our work before then, so that if, that if we're right, and that does indeed come to pass, that nobody's lost connectivity, that everybody can get to everything else that is IPv6 only on the internet. <clears throat> and we also, there are also some interesting websites showing statistics of deployment over time, that uh, one of which uh, is uh, run by Eric Vinke, uh, who uh, he, sh he provides the opportunity to track statistics over time, the deployment levels of IPv6, and then extrapolate from there using various mathematical curves that you can choose to see when, when you think, based on any given set of uh, history or uh, forward-looking uh, extrapolation that you want to make, you can figure out when you think IPv6 will be uh, the predominant protocol on the internet. Very interesting stuff. And it does continue to work out. Pretty much all projections are around 2017 at the earliest, probably. 2018, maybe 2019. It's really interesting to see all of the different data sets and, and uh, 
speculation converging on uh, roughly the same dates. I would like to see us coordinate better to choose consciously uh, a date of 2017 or 2018 when we will all have fully deployed IPv6.